This is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm demonstrating how to crochet the Cozy Couch and Bedside Organizer Caddy, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description. There you'll find both right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as a link to the written pattern and all the supplies you need. For this pattern, you'll need two skeins of Red Heart with Love and a USI 5.5 millimeter hook. This one is by Brittany. You'll also need some stitch markers and of course, scissors and a yarn needle. Let's get started by taking a look at the finished bedside organizer. The finished bedside organizer is 16 inches wide and 25 inches long. So as you can imagine, it goes off screen a fair bit here. Now all these inches right here are to fit between the mattress and box springs of your bed if you're using this as a bedside organizer or to lay over the arm of the couch and possibly tuck under the cushion. So if you plan on using this exclusively on your couch or something like that, you may want to make this section longer. That said, it's very easy to do because this entire pattern is made simply in half double crochet stitches, uh, except for the edging, which is single crochet, even simpler. And the trickiest part right here is the surface crochet. And if this part trips you up, you can use a yarn needle and simply sew this portion. So the only other tricky part is that some of it's in the back loop only. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you today, but otherwise this is an extremely simple and great for beginners pattern. You could definitely make it wider, narrower, longer, alter it for you. You'll see how it comes together here in a few minutes and just how simple it is to make your own. So to make the first row of the cozy couch and bedside organizer caddy, we're going to start by chaining 49. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to chain quite that many, but you go ahead and chain your 49 or whatever width you'd like your finished caddy to be. So let me just make a few chains here. There we go. And let's go ahead and pretend that was 49. Now, to begin the rest of row one, what we're going to do is skip the chain closest to the hook and half double crochet in each remaining chain across. So if you chain 49, you'll have 48 half double crochets at the end of this row. You can work into whichever part of the chain you like, as long as you're consistent. I like to work into the back hump of the chain back here, sort of rather than working under the top two loops here, I like to work under the back hump because I feel like it just gives a better finished edge for making the edging into. But that part is up to you. So I'm just going to go into there, pull up my loop, yarn over and pull through all three. A half double crochet is quite simple. You just yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. So you just want to half double crochet all the way across your chain until you have 48 half double crochets made or more or less if that's what you decided to go with. If you get to the end and you find that, oh my gosh, I missed one, I've only got 47, it's totally fine. If you've got one too many or two too many or three too many, again, the width of this pattern is relatively arbitrary. I based it on some commercial bedside pockets, but again, you can make it whatever width you like. So if you've got an extra stitch or two or your short one or two, don't worry about it. You can just keep going. Rows two through 29 are simply chain one and half double crochet across. So that is all you keep doing for that entire section in the finished one. That was that big section of white. Again, that would go between your box springs and your mattress to anchor it in there if you're putting it on the bed or over the arm of your couch and maybe tuck under the cushion a little bit. So you can make that longer if you know exactly what you need as well. Otherwise, you just keep making half double crochet rows until you've reached row 29. And then we're just going to switch color and make do the same thing in the gray. So let me demonstrate how I did the color change now. Okay, so here I've made a tiny little version of the bedside pocket. So basically rows one through 29 are the white. So that's represented here. And then, like I say, we want to change to the gray or whatever your second color is for essentially another 29 rows. So right up here, I'm going to demonstrate how I do the color change at the end of row 29 to go on to row 30. I'm going to yarn over and go into the last stitch of this previous row, just like I normally would, and pull up my loop. Now it's time to yarn over and pull through. So if I'm making this switch down here, I would go ahead and I'd be ready to cut the white yarn and work with the gray yarn. So I've got that tail end here and here we're just going to pretend it's the other way around and it would be unattached and I would just yarn over and pull that through to attach that new yarn. And then I would have those two ends to weave in. Now, once the yarn's attached, of course, you don't want to leave a big tail like that. You want to just pull it up and yarn over and pull through. 
like so. But otherwise, the way to switch yarns or switch colors rather nice and clean like that is to use the new color to the, do the final pull through to finish off the last stitch of the previous row. Then you're ready to start crocheting with the new color shown here in the gray. So that would be right there representative of rows 30 through 58. So, so far we've just made 58 rows of half double crochet. And you don't have to change color here either. If you want to do this all in one color, you absolutely could. Then we come to row 59. And row 59, we're switching back to our first color, color A, and we're working half double crochets again, but this time it's in the back loop only, which creates this ridge right here. So the stripes that I made at the front of the pocket, I wrote it out with four color, four rows in each stripe here on this little swatch. I just did two for demo purposes, but that's what also creates that great ridge line for the stripes, is working in the back loop only when you switch colors. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that for you now. So now I want to demonstrate working in the back loop only, and also I want to demonstrate how to float your colors along the side. Now for these two sections, they're so big it makes sense to cut the yarn rather than carry it along the side, but when we make the stripes at the front of the pocket, it's a good idea to carry them along the side so we don't have to cut them every time. Again, if you're using one solid color, this part won't apply to you. But let's go ahead and demonstrate both of those things happening at once here. I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to go into the back loop only of the first stitch. The back loop only is that loop of the top V of the stitch of the previous round that is furthest away from you. It's always relative to you as the crocheter. So you can just stick your hook right in the middle of that V there and just go under the very back loop, pull up your loop and finish off your half double crochet as usual. So let's do that again one more time. I would yarn over, go right in the center of that V there, just under the back loop and pull up my loop and make my half double crochet as normal. So that's simply all there is to working in the back loop only. After that, the other rows are simply worked under both loops again. However, when I'm working along this edge with my floating ends, I want to be able to bring them up along the side, but I don't want them hanging out loose. So one of the ways I like to do it here, let me get that row started again. Oops, there we go. I'll make that chain one again. And then when I make that first half double crochet in the back loop only, I'm going to go ahead and pull the other color here up so I can crochet right over it, like so. Now, normally when I float colors along the edge of something like a blanket, I would keep them more to the side so that the edging can cover them up like I've done here. But for a project like this, where I know it's going to get folded and seamed, I also know it's not going to show back here at all. So it's okay to just go ahead and work over that unused color every time you make this stitch at the end here to work it on up because it's all going to get hidden when we seam this up. So again, just make your half double crochet rows across and then half double crochet across again and again and follow the written pattern. Let me go ahead and pull up the finished bed pocket again to take another look at those rows. Okay, so when you make the rows, you've got a row of your color A, color B, color A, color B, and color A again. Every time we switched color there, we worked into that back loop only to create this little extra ridge there across the front of the pocket, but that is totally up to you. Finally, the very last row to, before we're ready to assemble is a row of back loop only single crochet. So just the same way we made the half double crochet, but this time it's single crochet and it's worked in that color B color. I think that just gives it a really nice finished edge. After that, we'll be ready to go ahead and assemble our pocket. So let me demonstrate that for you now. So now it's time to assemble our bedside organizer. At this point, you should have one long rectangle, a lot longer and bigger than this, of course. This is just our little mini version. Now, this is the wrong side or the inside of the pocket. And you can tell that if I turn this over here, hopefully you can see we've got those ridges from working in the back loop only. That's what we want on the outside. So we want that to face down right now as we lay out our rectangle. At this point, it would also be a good idea to go ahead and weave in all your ends, but this is just our little swatch version, so I haven't taken the time to do that today. Now what we're going to do is fold it up at the bottom of this line. That is essentially row 59. That first time we worked in the back loop only, that's going to create the fold right there at the bottom of our bedside organizer. And when we fold that out, we've got the ridges out, and this will be the outside of our pocket. So to assemble, all we need to do is single crochet through both layers of the pocket, starting at one side, working along here. When we finished at the top of the pocket, just keep going. 
And then I like to change colors to white here to work along the white portion, but you can work in whichever color you like. Just single crochet all along that side. Crochet across our foundation chain there. This is where working into that back hump can make it a little bit easier because now we've got two loops to work into. Single crochet along this side. You can change colors again here if you like. And then finally, single crochet along this side. When you get to this side of the pocket, crochet, crochet through both of those layers until we get to this bottom edge. And that's where I went ahead and finished off. If you wanted to, you could also work a row of single crochet into that remaining loop down there and join on this side. That, however, is totally up to you. So to do your seaming, I do recommend that you use stitch markers or clips or whatever you like to hold your pocket in place before you start single crocheting through both of those layers. Of course, with a great big full size pocket, you'd need a lot more than two, but that's essentially the idea. And then what you want to do is take whatever color that you'll be doing that seaming in or that edging, whatever you wanna call it, make sure all your ends are tucked in there, any floats or little bits you wanna make sure are tucked inside. And then I like to actually join right here to this first unused loop down here and pull up my loop, chain one, make a single crochet right back in that space, and then I'm ready to start crocheting along the side. And I just take my time and work through both layers, give, it a, give the hook a little wiggle if you need to, and make single crochets right along the side. So however you want to space those, your gauge will be a little bit different than mine. You may have substituted stitches. As you can see, this pattern is really easy to adjust and personalize. When you come to those stitch markers holding your sides together there, you can go ahead and remove those and get those out of the way. Maybe, <laughs> this one doesn't wanna come out. There we go, it's gotten caught a, lot, a little thread there. All right, so we just continue working, like I said, right along the side, take your time, go through both layers. Once you get through the pocket portion, of course, it's significantly easier to just crochet through one layer. But this way we don't have to sew. That said, if you prefer sewing, you absolutely could take yarn and a sewing needle, or well, a yarn needle, and whip stitch around that side if you wanted to instead. So however you want to assemble it, again, feel free to mix it up and really make it your own. I'm almost all the way up this side of the pocket here. So I just wanna make sure to come in and tack down that very last row there, our back loop only single crochet. And then I'm ready to just single crochet right through the one layer. And then of course, like I said, when I made the, f the first one, my big full size one, I did change to white here for this edging, but if it's just going to be hidden away between a mattress and box springs, it's up to you if you want to take the time to do that. Otherwise, I would just work my way around. When I come to the corners, let me check my instructions here and remember what I did exactly. At the corners, I would simply chain two. So work along this side, chain two, work along that side, chain two, and then finally work along that side. And that is the basics of the assembly. The only thing left to do after that is to add the pocket dividers. So if I were making a teeny tiny little pocket like this, I probably wouldn't want any dividers. But on the full size one I made, I did want dividers in there, both to help stabilize the pocket a little bit so it doesn't pull out too much when it's in use, and also to customize it for different objects. So if you know what you're going to put in your bed pocket ahead of time, you can get those things and sort of lay them out and decide where you want those lines to be. That's how I did mine. So let's just pretend we're doing it with our little guy right here and I wanted to put my hook and my scissors in here, then I would know I wanted a line right down the middle. So wherever you want those lines to be, I think the easiest way to do it is to mark the top of where you want that line to be. We'll say right there for now with a stitch marker. And then I can move those objects aside. And then I can pull in some other stitch markers and use those to continue the line on down the pocket, just to visually give me something to work with here. So obviously on the finished pocket, the full size pocket, I would take a lot more time and get that all lined up and add however many lines I wanted to have down my pocket. Now that will be my guideline for sewing down the pocket. Again, you could use yarn and your yarn needle and sew that up, but I chose to use surface crochet. I also chose to change the colors so that when I crocheted through the white stripe, I would be using white yarn. And when I, try, when I crocheted through the gray stripe, I would be using gray yarn. 
So that's a little bit more advanced. So if that's too tricky for you, you can do it all in one color. Or again, like I said, simply sew it down. But let me do a quick demo of the surface crochet now. However, again, there is a separate tutorial for this linked at the link in the description. Okay, so that it's a little easier to see, I'm going to do it with the gray yarn here. I'm going to start, I'm going to find the stitch at the bottom of my line that I've marked with my stitch markers. I'm going to go into that unused loop again and pull up a loop of my yarn again. I want to make sure I leave enough tail there to weave in that end when I'm all done. There we go. And it, in fact, when you're starting the surface, surface crochet, it can be really helpful to keep a hand or keep a couple fingers pinching that tail end so it doesn't try and pull through on you. Now from there, I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to work a little bit to the left of my line here, uh, just for ease of lining it up and so you can see it. I'm going to come up here to the bottom of this next row and put my hook right in the bottom there and I'm going to go all the way through to the back of my project. I'm going to yarn over with the yarn, really get it around the hook there, and pull it on through and up through that loop, like so. So sort of a slip stitch right through the surface, essentially, of our project. Then I'll come up to the next row here, go through all the way to the back, grab another loop, and pull it up and all the way through. So then I can sort of pull down on that tail end and know it's probably not going to pull off, on, pull out on me now. Move those loops together if you like that look a little better. There we go. And of course, we'll weave that in at the end. After that, we just keep working our way all the way up our pocket until we get to the top. T trying to create a really, just as straight a line as you can. It's okay if you don't want to go right into the base of a stitch to keep your straight line. You may need to start working, sort of splitting a stitch a little bit. Just take your time and work your way up in as straight a line as you can to the top of the pocket there. Now when you get to the very top to finish this off, I'm going to go ahead and pretend that's where I've gotten already. So I've got that end to weave in there at the beginning, but when I finish I will have one end here all the way on the back again, ready to be cut. So I'll go ahead and cut that, and then to finish it off what I want to do is take that last loop and pull the end to the front, and then I will put that on a yarn needle and uh, which I forgot to grab, unfortunately, before beginning this tutorial, but we'll pretend I have a yarn needle and you can just pull that right down into the back, like so. So if you don't have a yarn needle, you can use a hook like I just did. Just pull that cut end to the front and then send it to the back and then it'll be ready to weave in here on the back and that final loop will be nice and tacked down. So that is how you assemble the bedside organizer. Let's take one final look at the finished caddy. All right, so here we have another look at the finished bedside organizer caddy. These are my surface crochet stripes here. Hopefully they'll stand out a little better. You can see that's where I put my pockets. So I've got room for my reading glasses and my remotes and maybe a small book there. This is that first section we made, which we'll tuck away again. You can see here where I changed colors and then just simply made those half double crochet rows on up. And then of course we've got our pocket rows that folded forwards and then we did our seam around the sides and our surface crochet pocket dividers. And that is essentially it. Like I said, don't worry about exact stitch counts or row counts. Just try and get those back loop only ridges all on the same side and I think you'll be just fine making your own custom bedside organizer. So I hope this video has helped you make your own bedside organizer caddy. With Red Heart With Love, it's washable, dryable, and great for living rooms, bedrooms, dorm rooms, all sorts of uses. If this video has helped you, please do give it a thumbs up and let us know what you think in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.